Welcome back to Factor Fictional, the show where we look at the cool tech and science from your favorite TV shows, movies, video games, and comic books, and ask, is this really possible? And if not, why not? Last week we discussed Closed Circuit, uh, the upcoming film, and in particular, CCTVs all around the world. Uh, now, something that I learned that I was pretty surprised about is that they are actually a lot more hackable uh, than I would have expected. That's pretty scary. I mean, we already suspected that the government was spying on us, but now I feel like just about anyone can spy on you. So cool. Cool. If you see one of those cameras, I'm gonna start wearing one of those baseball hats, like pulled down over my eyes. You know, because of all the illegal activity I'm doing. But you guys had some things to say about the show, including Sean Nicholson, who wrote, I hate all the CCTV cameras in my country. I think the UK has the largest collection of CCTV in proportion to the population. Their attitude was, if you're not breaking the law, why should you mind? I don't break the law, but still don't like that I'm viewed by CCTV at least a hundred times a day. And then Reunite Peace, 777 writes, I've done nothing wrong, have nothing to hide, so there's no need for me to be spied upon. Also, the government has nothing to hide. Why don't they declassify everything? Wait, so are you saying that, was that sarcastic and then that means that you were being sarcastic about the first part that you wrote about, so you actually do have a reason to be spied upon? Or do you really think the government has nothing to hide? I don't get you. And then finally, uh, in response to talking about future upcoming episode ideas, William Bryan wrote in and said, in the British series Utopia, the movie Children of Men, the graphic novel Why the Last Man, all feature viral attempts at complete or partial sterilization of the human population, intentional or otherwise. So, fact or fictional? Hmm, interesting idea for an upcoming episode. Very good. I like that one. Well, today we are talking about a different kind of comic book, and that, of course, is The Amazing Spider-Man. Now, there's gonna be another movie coming out later next year, but we wanted to talk more about the graphic novel, more about the comic book version of Spider-Man, where he has the mechanical web shooters that can enable him to swing from building to building, to wrap up bad guys with his web, to do all sorts of crazy, amazing stuff. So, to learn more about that, I brought on my favorite comic book nerd, Roger Chang. Roger, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Now, what is the most complex part of Peter Parker's web slingers? Is it the mechanism? Is it actually creating the, the web fluid? Uh, how did he go about doing this? So I'm gonna go on a limb and say both yeah. are actually pretty complicated to do. Let's say, for argument's sake, that the fluid does everything it can do in the comics and the movies. Being able to shoot fluid that far from just a contraption that fits around your wrists seems highly unlikely, especially since we see Spider-Man swinging from the top of a lot of New York, uh, New York's popular uh, high rises, right? That's a good, you know, 100 feet, I, I would say. And, uh, you know, maybe if you had something here, you'd maybe get like five feet. Ooh, yeah, you need like a lot of like compressed air. Yes. To, to shoot it um, out. I mean, if you want to get that far, you would need a really, really large amount of uh, compressed air. Uh, possibly more than a, a, a single man could carry. Now, Spider-Man be, might be able to carry because he has the proportional strength of a spider. But he would also be climbing around with a giant, you know, tank on his back. Right, he wouldn't keep the svelte look of the no. costume. So there's two different kinds of Spider-Man. There is the Spider-Man that is able to generate the web-like fluid yes. uh, from his own system versus the Spider-Man that uses the mechanical contraption. Yeah. You know, the, the organic one is uh, you know, specific to the movies, the mm -hmm. ones that they did, because uh, I guess part of it was they wanted something a little more uh, um, organic about his spider webs rather than the comics, which he has all the powers of a, spy uh, a spider, uh, except he doesn't have any web shooters, so he creates some, Peter Parker being a, a budding scientist, um, and he effectively makes, he concocts a fluid that acts like spider web. Is there a material out there that exists now that would be as strong, perhaps, as, as a synthetic webbing that Peter Parker could create? In the science of biomimicry, where scientists and researchers try to develop technologies based on what we find in nature, uh, spider webs are actually one of the biggest uh, 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 fields of research, mainly because uh, spider webs can uh, be extended or stretched 40% of their length, in, in addition to their, their nominal length. You can stretch it 40% more without breaking. And to be able to do that with a synthetic fiber would be great. Um, because you can just use it for so many things. It's not just being able to hold things with, uh, with a single strand of it, but think of all the th all the things, materials you could weave with that same fiber. Kevlar vests that are super strong. You could build uh, helmets that are super light, but also 
you know, indestructible for mm -hmm. bicyclists or motorcyclists. Now say you were Peter Parker, would you be able to use the same kind of webbing for different activities like climbing, swinging, wrapping up people, getting them stuck in their web, um, or would you have to have different types of cartridges for that web? For a spider, it's the same fluid, but they spin it out differently and they add glue depending on where they need it, for example, in the webbing to capture prey like, you know, insects and, and small mammals. Spider-Man would probably have to do the same thing. How he does it isn't really ever explained. Uh, it's just, he manages to do all sorts of things. He can shoot a full net, you know, from them. At the same time, he can just shoot a strand. I would say not without some specialization in the cartridge head and the way it's shot. I would like Spider-Man to actually shoot web out from his behind, the way a real spider does. It would be quite anatomically appropriate. I think they did that mainly for convenience sake, and you know, kids aren't gonna read a comic about a guy who swings from his but That'd be a different book altogether, <laughs> <laughs> a different novel altogether. So overall, would you say that a mechanism to allow a human being to swing from buildings and to, to act in the manner of an arachnid, would you say that that is fact or fictional? I would say it's fictional. However, I will say that science is getting much closer to mimicking the properties of actual spider web. However, I doubt they'll get it to the point where it's a fluid and then you just shoot it and it's like silly string where it shoots and hardens and becomes rope. That's probably unlikely because a, a spider's fluid is essentially uh, amino acids dissolved in, in a liquid and you shoot, forms a, po uh, a protein molecule and becomes solid. All right, well, thank you so much for coming on the show. I feel like I, I definitely have a better handle on the mechanics behind Spider-Man. Including the web shooting out the... Out the butt. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it seems, according to Roger at least, that the web slingers for Spider-Man are fictional. I'm a little let down, I have to say. Maybe that could be like the next action sport. Instead of doing like zip lines, you just have a web shooter and you shoot from place to place and then you like swing down to the, that sounds like a lawsuit waiting to happen. Let me know what you want to see on a future episode of Fact or Fictional. Either tweet me at Veronica, post on Google+, post on Facebook, or you know, write in the comments below down here on YouTube. Because you know, we're having, we're having a conversation over here. I hop in the comments sometimes, probably, you know, against my better judgment. And remember, new episodes of Factor Fictional every Friday right here on TechFeed at youtube.com slash techfeed. I'll see you guys next time.